and Zoning Commission meeting to order for February 25th. Uh, can we all please stand and say Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of, America, of the United States of America to and the to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, nation God, under God, God is liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. <clears throat> Okay, can I have roll call, please, Jenny? Certainly. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Richard Suzak, absent. Of Virginia Higley, here. Frank Alimo. Here. Mary Scott, absent. Uh, Vinnie Grillo. Here. And John Petronella. Here. Okay, at this time, I'd like to appoint uh, Commissioner Petronella and Commissioner Grillo for the remainder of the meeting to take the place of the absent commissioners. Okay, uh, moving on. Can I get an approval of the minutes February 11th, 2021? Second. Motions made and seconded. Are there any corrections, alterations, concerns? <clears throat> okay, seeing none, I have one. Um, before we vote, I made it clear that the commission was not voting to approve the car dealership on 718. We were just voting on the King Street Overlay District, and that is not in the minutes. Lori, did you get that, Jen? Yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah. thank you, Jen. I, I'm writing it down too. Okay, um, can I get a motion to approve as amended? So moved. Uh, Motions made second. by Commissioner Alimo, seconded by Commissioner DeGray. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next is public participation. Anyone out there who would like to speak to the commission about any issues that are not currently on our agenda, please state your name and address for the record. Is there anybody out there who would like to speak? Anyone? Okay, seeing none, bond releases. I don't see any this evening, correct? No bond releases. Okay, correct. Continued public hearings. I um, don't see any of them either. So nope, moving, on, moving on, new public hearings, public hearing 2993, zero Elm Street. Commissioner Higley? Yep, uh, PH 2993, zero Elm Street, zone change application from business regional zone to business general zone in order to allow a car wash to be located between Hanush and the mobile gas station in front of the Enfield Square Mall. NEC Ventures, uh, the second LLC applicant, Enfield Square Realty LLC, Enfield CH LLC, and Enfield Nassim LLC owners. Oh, dated this 12th day of February, 2021. And we, have the, the we have the posting in the newspaper. I believe it's online on our screen page. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Certainly. Ken Nelson? Here. Linda DeGray? Here. Virginia Higley? Here. Frank Alimo? Here. <clears throat> Vinnie Grillo? Here. John Petronella? Here. Okay, is there anyone here for the applicant? If so, please state your name and address for the record. Yes. Uh, Good evening, your, um, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. For the record, my name is attorney Carl Landolina, Fahey and Landolina, 487 Spring Street in the town of Windsor Locks. I'm here tonight representing the applicant, NEC Ventures 2 LLC, in connection with their request for a zone change from uh, business regional to business general for a parcel of land 
located on Elm Street. Uh, my client is the contract purchaser of the property in question from the owners of the Enfield Square Mall, the three uh, entities that uh, Commissioner Higley just read into the record. Um, this parcel, as, as you've probably seen on the map that we provided, is 1.47 acres, and it's known as lot number four on the subdivision, which this commission uh, first approved in 2019 when the owners of the Enfield Square uh, came before you to subdivide their property into 13 separate lots. Um, and again, in 2020, when the Macy's property joined in with the, uh, the owners of the property, the mall property, uh, this commission approved a resubdivision for a total of uh, 16 lots. So what was formerly 90 Elm Street is now consisting of 16 separate lots. Um, the one that we're uh, interested in today is, as I said, lot four, which is located between the mobile gas station, which has been there for uh, a, a number of years, and the Hanush jeweler on the corner of Elm, and I think that's Freshwater, uh, which has been there probably a decade or so. Uh, so obviously, this is a vacant parcel of land. It has frontage on Elm Street in the back of the lot, as we'll call it, uh, is on one of the internal roadways uh, that run through the um, the Enfield Square property. Um, as you're aware, I'm sure, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman and members of the commission, the business regional zone has a minimum acreage requirement of five acres. Um, and the business local zone has a minimum uh, area requirement of 22,500 feet. So that suggests to me that when this commission approved the subdivision of uh, 13 uh, lots in 2019 and subsequent to that, the 16 lots uh, in 2000, uh, 2020, um, many of those lots were undersized for consideration and development within the uh, business regional zone. Uh, many of them lack uh, either the required frontage or the required area. Um, and this is, this is one of those lots. So to me, that, that means that the commission, I think, was, was um, at least interested in the idea eventually of changing the zone of those lots so they could be developed uh, in, in, um, in a manner that's consistent with their, their size, given that they're undersized now and in, in the, um, and I guess non-conforming, so to speak, in, in the business regional zone. So I assume that you were all expecting at some point, these lots were gonna be parceled out, sold to individual um, developers who would come in and seek um, zone changes for their specific uses in the, business general zone. My understanding that uh, the long-term, um, uh, I guess, desire of the commission was to create sort of a central business district down on Elm Street, um, knowing that, you know, we've all, you, you know, I, I grew up in Windsor Locks. Most of you have probably grown up in Enfield, but I remember them all from the first day it opened and it's, you know, it's, it, it's not what it used to be and it's, it's not going to be returned to what I would call its former glory uh, anytime soon. So the owners of the mall decided as a way of uh, maximizing their income or the marketability of, of the mall parcel uh, came to you for this subdivision approval, which, which you then uh, approved. So um, we think this is probably the first of several zone change applications you're going to see on some of these art parcels. Um, and if I'm not, not mistaken, I think the town of Enfield might even own one of these parcels. That, that could be true, I, I'm not sure. I thought I, I heard that somewhere. Um, but again, the parcels along at least Elm Street and some of the other areas are, are under, as I said, again, undersized for BR development, which requires five <laughs> acres and 80,000, a minimum of 80,000 square feet of floor area uh, in order to develop them. 
the only uses that are really approved or allowed to be approved in the business regional zone under your current regulations are uh, the planned commercial development uses. And then of course the regional shopping center. Um, now the mall is a regional shopping center, um, but uh, there's not going to be, that I can see in the near future, any further development in connection with the Enfield Square proper. Um, and the planned commercial development is, is sort of, I guess, what you would see on Paloma Drive and uh, Freshwater, some of those uh, automotive uses out there that the buildings have you know, combined areas of greater than 80,000 square feet, but they're, they're, they're sort of the buildings are chopped up and, and leased to uh, individual tenants. Um, so none, none of those uses and neither of those two uses are appropriate for this 1.4 acre parcel. Um, so in order to have any real effective use of the parcel, it needs to be rezoned to uh, the next uh, zoning um, category, which would be business general. There are business general parcels in the area. This abuts a business, business general parcel. Um, so given that we're asking for the commission, <clears throat> I think to take the next step, what I believe, I'm not trying to put words in any, anyone's mouth or read your minds, but looking at what happened with the subdivisions in 2019 and two, 2020, I think it'd be reasonable to assume that uh, this would be the next logical step to start rezoning some of these uh, smaller parcels so they can be used in accordance with the, the, the zoning uh, standards in the business general zone as opposed to the <coughs> business regional zone. So I think it fits with your plan of conservation and development as I understand it and this desire uh, to sort of create something down on Elm Street. Um, and um, Unless anyone has any questions, I didn't really prepare, uh, you know, much of a major uh, presentation. You know, there's not a glitz, a lot of glitz and glamour here. So uh, I think it's a straightforward application, and I'd be happy to, uh, you know, answer any questions that the uh, commission might have. We do have representatives from uh, NEC Ventures to LLC with us tonight. If you if you need to ask any questions that I'm not able to answer, but given that this is uh, you know, we're not talking about the specifics of any plan. Um, you know, these developers would like to put a, a car wash there, but but the zone change is really whether or not this, uh, I think the question for this commission is whether or not this partial should stay in the business regional zone or should be moved to the business general zone um, so that it can be uh, used in, in, in uh, sort of a proper setting with uh, those requirements in your regulations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Carl. Um, I'm gonna, I, I've got a few questions. When, when the mall came and they subdivided, um, I wasn't too good with it, but it's a planned unit development with the restrictive covenants that go with every one of these parcels, they're still tied to the Enfield Square, correct? Well, the, you are correct that there are, uh, there's a declaration of restrictions and covenants that go along with this parcel. Um, so that, I mean, there are cross easements and, you know, all of those things. So there is a connection. Um, but the, if you look at, um, and I did not submit it, but there is uh, the list of uses that are permitted by the owner of the mall are more akin to business general uses than sort of this regional uh, business zoning that it's currently in. But you are correct, Mr. Chairman. Yes, there is still a connection and they have to approve any of the uses um, that will go on any of these parcels, this parcel and all the other parcels that they're marketing at the present time. Right, and what I was getting at is because it's, and I'm going to use PUD because that's what I consider the mall now with all the out parcels, just like a residential property. Um, you own the land, you own the building, but you have, you're part of a larger parcel that permitted it to be cluster housing on a regular residential area. So when, when I, and I'm speaking for myself, not the rest of the commission, but when I agreed to this, 
it was agreed to because it is still tied to the mall, which does still meet the requirements of um, the uh, business regional instead of uh, business general. Because the way I look at it is, if what you're saying is more accurate, how come they're not doing it for the entire square parcel, uh, the entire property? Because you're correct. If if what you're saying is correct, Carl, then all the other properties are going to have to come to us also. And looking at your map here, it's really only specific to yours. So that's a great question, Mr. Chairman. This is my understanding. Uh, having uh, been involved in some of the discussions uh, between the developer and uh, the proposed developer of this parcel and the folks who own the mall. Um, the folks who own the mall, I like if they had come to me and asked me to do this subdivision, we would have had this discussion. And I said, well, why don't you take the next step and get these parcels rezoned? Um, because that's, if you're gonna really attract uh, and market these properties, that's the way they probably should be marketed. Um, the, the, the owner of the mall does not, you know, I don't want to say anything out of turn, but everything that's that's happened with respect to this parcel, um, all the expenses and all the the applications are on the de the developer. Uh, the folks who own the mall do not want to take use any of their resources, shall we say, to do this. Um, so I, I, that's the best answer I can give you at this point. And and how, how do you interpret what I had said about? it being considered a PUD and still being part of all the acreage of the mall. Be and the reason I'm saying it is because the way I interpret it, Carl, I don't think you need to do this because you're still part of a larger cluster. Well, in, in, Mr. Chairman, in my understanding of, and, and I know you, you, you know, you, you know this as well and, and you're, familiar with a lot of this. Um, we are not required, as I understand it, under the Declaration of Covenants and Restrictions to be a, uh, a part of a larger group. We are going to be a standalone parcel. Um, you know, obviously, there may be expenses related to uh, maintaining some of the, the driveways and inner part of it. Um, but beyond that, we're it's not a typical, I understand when you're like a planned community or PUD you're talking about, where we would be a member of an association. That's not the case here that I'm aware of. So the owners of this parcel will not be a member of an association. There will be uh, some contributions towards some common elements. But so it's it's kind of a hybrid in that circumstance. But, but I understand what you're saying that um, now, and the other part, to be frank with you, the use to which we want to put the property does not appear to be a use that would be permitted in the business regional zone. Okay. And I think you're going to find that um, now, if you feel differently, uh, you know that that being part of this planned community or planned unit development opens up the the types of uses beyond what 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 the regulations seem to limit us to would be the planned commercial development in the in the regional shopping center. Um, I, I, you know, maybe we'd approach this differently, but my thinking is at this point, I'm not convinced that that would be the case. So what, what you just spoke on that the particular use that you want for this property is not allowed in business regional. Well, that would make sense for changing the zone. I would agree with that because then it would be a permitted use. But as far as the other way, um, I, I think you see where I'm coming from on it. But mm -hmm. if it's not, if what you're trying to do is not permitted, then that doesn't work for you. Right. My concern is, is I don't want to end up down the road with any of these parcels wanting access directly to Elm Street or to Freshwater or to any of the surrounding roads. Mm -hmm. because that was never the intent and the way it was sold right it, it was sold like the plan unit development mm -hmm. and, and i want to try to keep it 
a planned unit development. I don't even want to say as close to that. I want to keep it the way it mm -hmm. was where everybody has to use the common roads through the square. Um, yes, you own your property solely, you know, but the square still has the rights. So um, th that's just my concerns with it. Right. So, well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I can tell you this, that under the Declaration of Restrictions and Covenants, which we will be subject to, we take title, uh, I believe that is a, a, a condition. And we know whether that was or wasn't, we are not getting an encroachment permit from DOT to put a driveway onto Elm Street in that location. It's never going to happen. You would right. never let it happen. Right. DOT is not going to let it happen. And frankly, if and when we come in with a site plan, you're going to see we have no intention of doing that because um, I would have told anybody who approached me from day one, if they wanted to do that, I would say that's that's a lost cause. Mm -hmm. That's never going to happen, and it shouldn't happen. Frankly, right. I mean, you know, the the entrances to the mall are are you know with the traffic lights and all of that. I mean, that's there's no reason for anyone to try to enter any of those parts except through those boulevards or thoroughfares, whatever you call them, driveways. Um, so I agree with you there clearly. Right unless somebody was trying to buy a property without the restrictive covenants. Yeah. And and that's what I yeah. think the entire commission was in agreement. That's not happening. That is that is not going to happen from what I understand with these uh, owners of the mall. I mean, frankly, when we saw, I've written these things, Ken, mm -hmm. and when I read through these, I said, you know, not that I'm a slouch, but I said, this these weren't written by you know, these were written by some lawyers in Chicago or whatever. I mean, these, it's like a book. Yeah. You know, and you had to read it like nine times to, to make heads or tails of it. Yeah. Uh, so it, it is as airtight and ironclad as I've ever seen anything. And that's, I understand your concern over that. And I'm sure that when they come in for their subdivision, they heard you loud and clear because mm -hmm. the document they, that they produced after that uh, would never allow any of that to happen. And it'll, right. frankly, they still have something of value there and they don't want to see it, you know, you know, they've got to keep their own investment. Absolutely. You know, yeah. because, uh, and that's the common charges. You, it's, 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 uh, again, I don't go too much, but the, the conditions and the covenants are as, as onerous as I've ever seen in any type of this document. Right. Okay. Thanks, Carl. You're Commissioners. Welcome. Commissioner DeGray. Um, this is a personal thing and just me speaking. I, I have some concerns about changing the zoning and just this lot to business general because I'm having a concern about them coming back because the mall did, the, the owner of the mall came in and wanted all these subdivisions and the, this, this whole thing and we agreed to it. So now I'm starting to have this feeling and it's only me speaking for me only that they're gonna be coming in and trying to rezone this, this little plot here, this little plot there. That to me is a concern and I understand what this, this is for but I, I'm I'm starting to have an uneasy feeling about constantly coming in to oh let's rezone this little plot let's rezone that little plot and then we kind of lose this whole re district this whole shopping district part that's just me. All set. Yep, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank thank you, Commissioner Gray. And along with what you were saying, Commissioner De Gray if the entire parcel were to be rezoned, it's not spot zoning. Just doing one particular lot is spot zoning, which is against our regulations. Uh, Commissioner Alimo. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So when we went through the process, it was the covenants um, that I feel, my, I thought all of us anyway, was why I approved and, and liked the whole idea. So I thought, Mr. Chair, like you did, this ties back to the mall and that we didn't need the change because why would we move forward to make anything non-conforming 
to the mall. So, but if we need to, I say move forward and make the change because we don't want to see, obviously these, these lots not be able to be developed. The whole idea was to uh, have this area developed. So um, I, Carl is the professional in the law area and he sees that we may need to do this, but, and we will, I mean, I'm for it, but, or, and I, or, and I don't want, I don't want to see us have to go through the motion. Like you were saying, Mr. Chairman, every time they're going to come in with one of these more than 13 lots now. So I, I, I would, I'm for the change or if we don't need the change, I'm for that. Main thing is I'm for that to be developed. All of those lots. We want to see that area. I do speaking for me, come back to life. Thank you. I don't think any commissioner disagrees with that. And it, it's just a matter of whether you guys approve this with the intent that it was still a unified property and they were all sold off, but still connected to the mall, which would mean they don't need this zone change. And what you're saying, Commissioner Alimo, is spot zoning. With one particular lot is spot zoning. If they came back for the entire parcel, the mall or the square, then that would eliminate the spot zoning. So, so you, you had oh. said you want to see them all developed. Well, if we take it under the planned unit development, it doesn't need this zone change. Everything right. can go through. Exactly. And, and if if you take it the other way, then the entire mall needs to be rezoned. Carl's correct about that. And I understand his position. He's only representing one party here. Right. And really, and that's why I'm asking, the mall should be the one here doing this or clarifying you know carl may not even well carl needs to be here because of the particular use but he wouldn't be here for a zone change he'd be here for a site plan review or um you know maybe at zba to get the particular use allowed i get i guess i didn't expect to see us having to deal with any zone changes as these lots got developed right because you assume they were still part of the mall individually owned right. but still and if you remember i was huge on that covenants because mm -hmm. of the right-of-ways i was worried mm -hmm. about water mains i was worried mm -hmm. about grease traps i was worried about lighting snow removals public safety i was really big on that covenants and i think that's right. an important all, document and it's like 30 40 pages so right it's all private infrastructure right right and it's going to be maintained by everybody paying into whatever fund or whatever fees are assessed upon well, them it's maintained by the mall they right. pay into the mall exactly so again i don't i guess you know where i'm, where I'm coming from so i, I yep. wasn't expecting this thank you yep. so thank if you i may mr, mr. chairman go ahead um, yeah so um i understand exactly where the commission is coming from that and and i i i, I wasn't there in 19 i wasn't there in 20 when, when you did this um so I guess we hadn't discussed amongst ourselves, the, the, the developer, my client and staff of whether or not this particular use could fit into this planned commercial development that, that you see this as one unified, mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, it's not specifically called out for, for being uh, on your you know, use table as a use that's permitted in the BR zone. Um, and frankly, beyond that, I didn't do a whole lot of um, talking with staff or going through the regulations to determine whether or not this use would fit under some other, you know, are you saying that you think you might have the flexibility to approve almost use, any use on there as long as it was part of a, a, a whole integrated, uh, you know, regional mall or commercial um, uh, looking over here, plan uh, commercial development is that? Well, I I don't I I don't want to get in the specifics of your use, but and yeah. I don't have the use table for the business regional zone. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think you've heard pretty clear from the commission we're about developing the mall and helping any way possible. And I want to hear Commissioner Higley has a question or she wants to speak. And I want to hear her take on it too, because so far 
Commissioner Alimo and DeGray, they're on board with me, which I think is to your favor, Carl, mm -hmm. that you don't need this. So um, if you give me one second, Commissioner sure. Higley, go right. ahead. You're muted, Ginny. Thank you. I agree with you, Ken. And um, I also um, felt similar to Linda's concerns. I don't understand why it wasn't changed in the table, the use table uh, on page 61. I, in other words, we're going to have, what, 13 parcels that are going to come before us. And I know that we have the uh, the plans, but I would like to see the use. There isn't that much business regional other than the square. And why not just have it as, as an acceptable use? I don't understand why that wasn't done rather than a specific site zone change. Thank you. So, Ginny, do you agree that when you agreed to the um, subdivision, that it was more of a plan unit development and it's still part of the larger parcel? Yes, but if legally we have to go through motions of allowing it in a zone other than what we can stand on. In other words, if if uh, there's a legal decision that says, no, you can't do that, then I would rather see it as a text change to the zoning regulations than as a zone change, because we're gonna have different zones over there and it's gonna be very confusing. And then every time the business changes, we have to go back and rezone it. So I'd rather see it, as you say, if we can legally approve it under the uh, covenants that we have originally approved, then I'm all for it. But if we can't, or if there's any question, I'd rather see it as a text change. Okay. Thank you. Um, Lori, can you chime in, please? Hi. <laughs> so, um, first of all, any of these parcels would absolutely all fall under the CCNRs. So they're all going to be part of the mall. They're all going to be part of the regional mall. To me, I actually see the parcels that are along Elm Street as, you know, I those are out parcels. I don't consider them part of like the mall itself, even though they are part of the property. So it's just like um, Wendy's and, and Friendly's, they're, they're all kind of like little out parcels, but they're not actually part of, you know, Part of the physical mall itself, but they're part of the physical property of the mall. So I don't see a lot of problem rezoning the parcels along the street, but if I was the commission, I would not even entertain rezoning anything on the interior. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of, I mean, you go anywhere, you see malls and, you know, they've got the big mall and then there's all the, the little out parcels along the street that you know, fit with the mall, but are not actually part of that physical structure. So um, as far as spot zoning, the neighboring site is also BG. So the, the um, what's the name of the jewelry place? Han Hanush, was it? Hanush. Yeah. And, um, you know, I like I say, that's, that's kind of the way that I looked at it. Um, Jen might have some other, thought the one that, that uh, wrote this, but um, I'm not sure how you allow this as part of the business regional. And I'd be concerned about putting that use in the business regional because then somebody might want to put a car wash in the middle of the mall. And maybe that's not the best oh. thing to do. Okay. Those are kind of my thoughts. Jen? Yeah, um, when we first uh, met with um, Attorney Landolina on this project, that was uh, my thought as well along the lines of Lori, um, that uh, it might make more sense to just change the zoning for that parcel as opposed to allowing um, a car wash in the business regional zone, wherever the business regional zone may be, because um, the business regional zone does extend beyond the mall property. Um, the other thing, uh, that I had thought was that a lot of the business regional, or I think all of the business regional uses are allowed by special permit. Um, and I just thought that that we would kind of be going down a path of trying to figure out how to change all of the uses in the table to create a um, 
a more sort of, I guess, easy path for approvals in that zone. Um, and it might be strange just to add car washes in with a site plan or something in that zone, given that everything else is by special permit. Right. So, so if, if Carl were to come to us with a special permit without the zone change, could he get this on that property? If everything's yeah. permitted with a special permit. The uses that are allowed are permitted with a special permit, but the car, car washes in particular are not part okay. of Okay. All right. I thought you had said everything is permitted. Maybe you meant everything in the table is permitted. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry okay. about that. I, it's I understand. Absolutely per table. Okay. So if you um, if you were to open this up to all of the business regional, then it could go anywhere, even if it was with a special permit. But you know, at, at least if it's in the business general, you keep it to alongside the roadway as an out parcel. It, so, you know, it across the street is, you know, over by um, Home Depot and whatnot, that, that, that's all business regional as well. So, I mean, if you open it up to this site, you're opening it up to every site. Right. And, and I understand what you're saying, but how do we do this and take care of the entire mall subdivision that we approved so we don't have to have 16 other parcels come to us? Like Jenny well, said, yeah. can can it be a text change? I, well, that's just it. Is I don't I don't think that you should really necessarily allow this throughout the business regional. And why no, not? No, 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 no. Just just on the road front lots on Elm Street. I agree with you. Not the mall, but like the the Wendy. You know, to do that whole strip from ninety one to Hanush. Well, I mean, we could do that, but that's not what the application is right now. So, I mean, if, 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 for instance, you were in favor of this, staff could go back and look at the reasonable parcels that we could even promote to have changed to Business General. Right, because I think that's going to help. It'll help Carl and his clients. It'll mm -hmm. help the mall marketing, you know, because he's Carl. We all understand what the mall's about, and you know, I, I guess this would help push them a little bit without costing them uh, to make it more appealing to people coming in. Again, not tying Carl up. How do we do this without? Well, I, well, I, I think that you um, take action on the application before you, and if it's something that you want to pursue for other parcels, we can pursue it as staff and the commission. And we, you know, we have to, you know, really look at all the different parcels and make sure that it's going to fit. And you said the parcel right next door to it is business general already? Yeah, so I believe the Hamish is yeah. business general. So that actually is the only business general right there. To the best so, of my knowledge. So if we approve this, we're actually making it less non-conforming because that one particular business is spot zoning. <laughs> so Carl's making this right for everybody is what well, he's doing. Yes, you can say that. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't smart enough to be the guy who got you to do that and when you zone Hanush. <laughs> but uh, so you're creating a bigger business general zone, and and we had this discussion, Lori and I and Jen, about you know, sort of everyone talks about what they wish for, you know, along, you know, and I, I thought that we had sort of talked about. Maybe that whole strip, like those, the Wendy's, the Friendlies, the gas station, yeah. should all be. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. there are ways. I'm, I'm looking at your regulations, and and you know, look, there are ways to. I think one of the problems you have is the definition of planned commercial development that could be worked or reworked, and and um, it doesn't fit what we're trying to do. But with a little bit of tweaks, maybe it would work for all the other interior parcels, so you could have exactly what you wanted, and and. Um, what you're looking for, Kat, I think, is some flexibility, right? To help this area succeed by having uh, the ability to have uses on smaller parcels that all tie in together uh, to help them all and, and help that become a vibrant area. But I, I do agree with Lori that 
I'm not sure that the parcels on with frontage on Elm Street necessarily have to be part of that. But, um, but, but you know, I got to tell you, this is one of the best conversations I've had with this commission in a long time because, you know, we're, you know, I, it's, it's clear that you're, everyone's thinking about trying to make this something, you know, that, that's lacking down there. You know? And you're going to have to be proactive, obviously, with it because, uh, well, and it, it takes input from both sides, Carl. So, yeah. I, I mean, you see where we're trying to go, you're trying mm -hmm. to get there, and we're trying to come up with something everybody can live with without right. destroying the center of Enfield. So, right. Um, Commissioner DeGray, did you want to speak again? Yes. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was muted. Um, yeah. I, I just want to make a comment to. Um, the staff is since we are reviewing these regulations and we're going to be getting hopefully I mean I know this is the first time in a long time we've seen anything coming out of that area I think we need to have a workshop with the um, consultant to talk about this and I was wondering if that would be something that, you know, the commission would like to see. I mean, I would like to, because obviously if there's going to be some changes, we need to make it now with a consultant and get his input too, so that we can move forward in a more positive light so that people aren't coming before us and spending time trying to get a new business into that area. Just a suggestion. That's it. Go ahead, Lori. Thanks. I, I can't raise my hand because I'm the host. So um, I was just about to say that, Linda, um, we are working on the POCD. We're going to look at this area um, through a, a traffic corridor study that we're, that we're starting. If you recall, we were supposed to be starting it about a year ago and then COVID hit and it's really hard to do a traffic study when um, there's no traffic, but we're about to start that. And with that, we're gonna have um, a couple um, market studies for the mall. And we could be doing the same thing in the, uh, with our consultant because they're also supposed to be doing some sort of market studying of the mall. Of course, working with Namdar, the owners, and see what they want. But this is that's exactly what we need to be doing. So, I, I mean, think this would be a, a, a something we would know on our front burner. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and we're going to be starting the POCD steering committee on the 17th of March. So, um, we're, we're, we're gearing up. So yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. But in the, in the meantime, I don't think that we should hold up the current applicant. That's what I was just going to say. I mean, we we have a plan of conservation and development right now. We need to follow. So, right. Um, if it changes, this developer came in first. Uh, Commissioner Petronella. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I I guess the concern is, is are are we pro if we approve this, would we be promoting in any way for any of the adjacent parcels under the BR to 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 follow with a, a zone change? meaning uh, uh, the, the parcel ID 10-2019, uh, which is an abutting parcel, uh, they're looking at, hey, uh, uh, we're abutting a, 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 a BL zone because we approved it. So he can, he wants to go for change because it, it, it won't make it spot zoning. So uh, would this in any way promote that? Opening up Pandora's box, if you will. Well, it kind of, it kind of sounds like the commission is in favor of promoting that along that stretch. Well, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I have no issue with the outer parcels, uh, uh, but it's the inner parcels uh, that that's what I'm worried about. Oh, I agree with you, John. I'm nothing inside. This, right. That's why I said just along Elm Street. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Yeah, I, I understand that, Mr. Chairman, but, but by by doing this, if, if an application comes in with with uh, um, one of the parcels that, that abuts this parcel, this particular parcel here, and they want to change, they're, they're uh, um, 
they're, they're going to come in with a, a, an application that says, hey, it's not spot zoning because we abut another parcel that is that is uh, changed to a, a, a BL zone. So we're kind of helping promote that. And then would we be compelled to approve that? Or we would have to come up with some language as we were talking about earlier uh, uh, to try not to do that. So a text amendment or whatever for that for that particular uh, entire parcel for the mall. What if we were to add something along the lines that um, this pertains to properties that abut the Elm Street corridor, which would eliminate anything behind any of these properties. It would eliminate Wendy's. It would eliminate. I, I, go ahead, uh, Lori. Go ahead. I would be reluctant to just start um, adding things like that ad hoc without really reviewing it in, you know, in depth. I mean, I, I don't think that this is going to open up Pandora's box. If somebody wants to come in and, and try to, you know, change the BR to, to the BG, then you just deny it. It's like, no, this is, you know, it's, it's a large parcel. It needs to stay that way. And this is the mall and that's the definition. And you don't have to approve it. I, I, I mean, understand. I, I understand no, I, what you're I, I, saying, Lori, but this parcel, when when we brought the original subdivision in, I consider this parcel part of that larger parcel. So if we start nipping away pieces at it, it's not going to be a large parcel anymore. Right. Well, no, it's, well it's, I, I'm just saying, it's like I I think what you want to do is is very wise. I think that we should select the parcels that you want to change to business general, if that's what you want to do. But for purposes of moving forward with this application, I don't think that you should start just, just a lot, you know, including other parcels without a full review. Right. Okay. That, Mr. That, Mr. I, I, I just, I always think that that's a dangerous thing to just kind of just start making things up at, when you're at a meeting. It, you just never know what you're getting into. Right. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Sure, go ahead. So um, you know that I represent many zoning commissions throughout the state of Connecticut. And so when you are acting, uh, doing a zone change or a text amendment, you are acting in a legislative capacity uh, as opposed to when you act on an application, you're acting administratively. So you are not bound uh, acting legislatively, you are not bound by any prior decision. Every decision stands on its own. Um, and the courts have said hundreds and hundreds of times that essentially you have the 100% discretion, nothing's 100%, 99.99% discretion to act in a legislative way in the way you want to at any time and the fact that you approved the zone change for something next door has no bearing on a parcel behind it or whatever. And the getting a zone change application that's been approved, overturned, or a zone change application that's been denied, getting that overturned by the court is one of the most, most impossible things to do as a zoning uh, lawyer. I can tell you, you know, when people come to me and say, I, I, got a, I wanted a zone change and I didn't get it, and I want to appeal, I'm like, that's wasting your time. I, uh, so I, I, I understand uh, Commissioner Petronella's concerns, but uh, you know, if you act favorably on our application, which obviously I hope you do, that has no bearing on what might happen to 10-2019 uh, because uh, you know, especially if you look at the record that's being produced here tonight, it, it's very clear to me. If I was to watch this tomorrow or read the transcript a year from now, you know, it's very clear to me as a prospective developer, let's say that parcel and someone said, we want to change it to the BG zone. And I read and I listened to what happened tonight. I would say, you know, you got a really hard sell there. I mean, that's just not going to happen. So um, th that's my two cents on it anyway, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Petronella, did you want to speak again? No, I'm sorry. I uh, didn't lower my hand. Oh, no problem. All right, at this time, I'm gonna open it up to the public. Let's see what they have, uh, their comments are. So is there anybody out there who would like to speak in favor or against public hearing 2993? If so, speak up, state your name and address for the record, please. 
going for the first time? Anyone? Going for the second time. Public hearing 2993, Zero Elm Street zone change application from business regional zone to business general zone, going for the third time. Okay, seeing none. Commissioners, how do you wanna proceed? To make a motion, we close the public hearing. That ends discussion. Second. Motions made and seconded. Uh, roll call, please. Jenny, you're muted. Thank you. Ken Nelson. Um, I'm going to have to say against. Okay. Linda DeGray. Against. This is for closing the hearing, correct? Right. Absolutely. Okay. I think there's All more right. discussion. All right. Virginia well, Higley against. Frank Alimo. I withdraw a motion if people want to talk. I was in no, no way wanting to shut anybody's uh, comments down. I just thought we we're all satisfied, but I could withdraw the motion if people feel they need to express themselves more on this. Uh, I withdraw the motion. Motion's been withdrawn. Is the second withdrawn? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the public sorry, hearing. Go, go ahead. That's fine. The public hearing is still open. I, I just see as the chairman, I see we're all over the place on this. Everybody has different opinions and different thoughts on how this should go. So if we close the public hearing, we can't discuss this anymore and try to, you know, all get, you know, relatively on the same page to proceed forward. You know, John has some very valid points. And um, like, like I said, I, I still see it as the plan unit development, which wouldn't need to be a zone change because of the size of the parcel. Maybe because of the use, but that's not what we're here for. I agree. I think we need a workshop to discuss this. I know Lori has said we're going to do the plan of development and everything else but i think right now since we as the commission are working on trying to update our zoning ordinances we need to have a workshop because that's the biggest parcel of developed area that we'd like to see something happen in and we keep putting it off and putting it off but i think we have to have this discussion as a commission with the consultant. And I don't feel comfortable just doing this. And I understand what Carl is saying. And I understand there's other uh, parcels on Elm Street that are business general, but I'm, I'm still uncomfortable with this because it's still part of the mall, no matter well, how we look at it. It is still part of the mall and it will still be part of the mall even if it's rezoned. It's still going to be part of the overall acreage. It's still going to be I part understand of understand that, Lori, but I still feel uncomfortable just doing these little things around that. I, I, I think it needs to, the whole thing needs to be looked at as a large area in the center of our town. It does, but you do have an application pending before you. And I understand that, there's what an you're, application. What you're asking for may not happen for months. So and again, I, just, I, I understand this applicant wants to move forward, but I'm really uncomfortable just making these little changes here, there. We've done a lot for these people and okay. I, I'm just uncomfortable. Well. The, the, this applicant is not Namdar. This applicant is I know they're not to buy a parcel in town and develop it. And that you have, you know, your directive. It's, Nam it's Namdar controlled. Exactly. And Namdar is not even here. Well, Namdar owns it. They're trying to sell it. 
So that, I that's would think exactly they, what I they said it, they wanted to do. Right. And I would think it'd be important enough to them to be here to discuss the remaining parcels that belong. The other business general parcel, is it in Hanush? Yes. I, I, I believe so, yes. Carl? Yeah. I, yes, Hanush is, is a business general uh, zone, yes. And and that is has zero connection to the square. That right. doesn't follow the restrictive covenants. It has no bearing with what happens at the square. That's 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 correct. That's my understanding, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Yes. You know, we just we keep we take keep taking little bites out of this mall, and you know everybody has you know these great ideas for it, but you keep selling off an acre here, a half acre there, and then changing zones on this lot and changing zones on that lot. Nothing's ever going to happen. Well, Mr. Chairman, the other parcels that that uh, I'm not saying all of them, but certainly, you know, the frontage parcels are they're all being marketed right now. Uh, we just happen to be the the first in line here. So, um, but, but I, and I understand that that some thinking overall, the whole concept needs to to, to be addressed at some point. Um, you know, we are on a very tight leash here. We don't have months and months and months to. Uh, you know, um, but, but, you know, Carl, Carl, and you have been nothing but respectful to this commission every time you come. And it's just, I feel you're doing the work for somebody. They came in and wanted this subdivided and the commission wasn't happy about it. So they should be the ones following through to make these marketable because technically they're not marketable for a lot of uses. And if, if you were to go with your original approach that the property is not big enough and it has to go to business general, then they're really not marketable. At least on my take, you know, they're part of the planned unit development over there, planned commercial development, and uh, they meet this, uh, the requirement for the lot size. Commissioner Alimo. So I'll go back to why I, why I made the motion to close the public here, because I thought prior we are all in a consensus that we were going to not hold up the application in front of us i think that's what the words that were used and then we were going to regroup and maybe talk to the consultant and see how we were going to move forward with the other lots along elm street the other parcels so the only way we can act on this and not hold up the application before us tonight is to close the public hearing and move forward to vote so if we leave the public hearing open um, we're going to hold up the application before us. And I just think we're all getting into the weeds. We're, get, we're, we're thinking too much into this. And it's to me, it, it'll appear that here we go again, we're going to stop development. The first application comes before us and we're getting into the weeds. And for professionally on Lori's part and Jennifer's part, they don't see, they don't see a problem. And you know, in Carl's opinion, you know, we don't have a problem. And I respect Carl's opinion 150%. So I just feel that I thought we had a consensus. That's why I made the vote. If we're going to move forward, we need to close the public hearing and vote. Thank but you. I, I understand what you're saying, Commissioner Alimo. But what they're trying to put on this lot is what doesn't fit. If it goes under what all of our assumption is, that it's a planned commercial development, he meets the requirements for this size because it's still part of the mall but it will not allow the use they're trying to put on it. Like putting a car dealership there. It's not a permitted use over there, but if you switch it to business general, it becomes a permitted use. And that's what's before us tonight. What's before us tonight is a zone. Switch it. Right. So they can to proceed. Allow this, to allow this and many other uses. Mm -hmm. For this particular lot, we're only talking about one lot of this, all the 16. But keep keep doing it to every particular lot over there, Frank, and there's no more square left. There's nothing left over there. We're not doing it to anything else. We're doing it to just what's, what's before us tonight. How do you just do it to this one and not the next one that comes in or the next one? Well, we had an opinion we that past, we're not, we we had an opinion. Past, we're not compelled to do that. We're that setting stands past on its own. I, I was just very excited tonight to see that we had an application before us. I want to see steel up in the air at the mall. 
you want to see a car wash where I, a potential mixed use may go residential, commercial. You, you want to see I, a car look, wash in front of it. Preferably, preferably, I don't, you know, I would rather see something else but a car wash, but that's not, that's not how we vote and make decisions on personal feelings. I would like to see Trader Joe's or I'd like to see a uh, Christmas tree shop or Why? maybe Why? something else. Well, I'm just Why? saying personally, because personally, it, the, personally doesn't come in here. It's but, not what I personally feel. But that's what's zoned there, Frank, is a Trader Joe's or a Christmas tree shops, because that's that's the intended use for that area. It's not a car wash. So what you just said, you would be against this. It is our personal opinion, and it's our regulation that says exactly what your personal opinion is. But if we're keeping it, if we're, the intent when we voted, I'm sorry. So when we voted on to, to, to divide up these lots, the intent and what I thought we were voting on was it was going to stay part of the mall because of that agreement, like a, like a common fee, and we were going to have these problems. That we were going to right. be able to play it. You're hundred percent correct. I mean, but it's, what, it's if crazy. you approve, if you approve this application tonight, it's no longer part of the business regional zone. So it's not part of the mall anymore. It doesn't have to follow the same regulations. Well, then I would refer to staff to see what they say. Because uh again, I, I'd hate to see us hold this up. You just Thank said you. you don't you would you'd rather see a Trader Joe's personally, but that's not my that's not my that's not what we're voting on. I'm not here, but, you know. We're, but personal opinion, Frank, your anything. regulation, your regulation, is not personal, but your personal belief dictates the regulations. That's what the regulations say. Is it's not a permitted use? It's not supposed to be there. A car wash. A car wash. I understand. That's, that's the whole holdup here. If it was a permitted use, he wouldn't be here. Well, what if he was here? Do, what if they were here? What if they were here before us asking for a zone change and not telling us what they're putting there? We would never approve a zone change without knowing what's going there. So if we did a zone change tonight, it doesn't have to necessarily be a car wash. They can come in next week and say, we're going to put something different there. They could, but it now it's a permitted use there. So they can put a car wash there. Right now, they can't. Right. But if so we change the zone, approve, if, if we change the zone, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be just a car wash. I understand, but that's that's what their intent is. All right. Well, if we have so, to wait, and if, if, if staff uh, advises us um, that we shouldn't, I thought we were in consensus to move forward. I'm with I you. Don't I think might we're be disappointed. In consensus at all. I'm sorry. I don't think we're in consensus at all. No, if we earlier, were, I would have closed the public hearing. I would have earlier, voted for it. I earlier, don't I thought every, I thought we were all good with it earlier. I'm sorry. I'm good. Thank you, Commissioner Petronella. Where do you stand? <clears throat> uh, I just assume, but. Keep it open. I, I still got some concerns, uh, as I said before, um, you know, about this being pecked away at uh, uh, gradually. And, and uh, uh, you know, again, we talked about, you know, possibly the outer parcels. And that's one thing. But one, once you start pecking away at it, I think you just kind of open it up Pandora's box for an expectation of, of more applications of uh, uh, potentially looking for a zone change. Uh, and, and I think that, that the consensus is, is really to keep the mall property uh, uh, the, the big parcel, the, the business regional parcel, as it is business regional. Uh, but by granting this, again, I just fear about opening up Pandora's box. So I, I just think it needs a little bit more consideration. Thank you, Commissioner Petronella. Commissioner Grillo, we haven't heard from you. What are your thoughts? You're muted. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with Commissioner Petronelli, but I also agree with Commissioner Limo. I'm torn between the two things because I feel, I thought we talked, I know that we know it was gonna be small. I do like the idea of them changing on the outside, and, but I also don't like the idea of the center of it changing. 
So I agree with you on that. So I, I'm in between on this, uh, to, to be honest with you. With So I would probably have to say I'd have to look into it more because I don't want the inside to be changed at all. 100% I agree with you. But the outside, if there's a way that we could change that without interfering with the inside, I, I think that that would that would make, make it work for me. Right now, I'm just, I don't know which way to go, you know? I don't want to open up that box. Right, and that's the concern is when we open it, is it going to be an automotive repair facility next? Is it going to be a car dealership? Uh, these are the things we've got to take into consideration because you start nipping away at it. Like Commissioner Petronella said, you're going to end up with one big building in the center that's surrounded by a million different uses and they should be accessory uses to whatever is in that building. Um, so I have some comments. But I'll, go you know, ahead. Go done. ahead, Carl. So Absolutely. I want, I, want the, I want the commission to go ahead and if they have any more concerns. Before. I don't have any hands up. Any commissioners? No, go ahead, Carl. Uh, as I said before, I think this is a great discussion, but um, if you look at the actual map, which is the 500 foot scale plan or whatever, um, besides this parcel, there's only one other frontage parcel on Elm Street. So that's the parcel um, that would be west, excuse me, east of the west entrance road, identified as 1-2019. So there are only two vacant parcels that I can see in this subdivision. Oh, I'm sorry. Looks like there might, I don't know if, no. The parcel across Flesh, Freshwater Boulevard is, is, has nothing to do with the mall. But inside, let's say the, so uh, parcel ID 1-2019. I gotta look at the map and talk at the same time and I don't wanna turn away from the, the computer. Sometimes my voice may drop. So we've got this parcel, the 4-2019 and 1-2019. Everything else is um, already developed. So if you were to look at the idea of creating, you know, BG lots along the frontage, it would just be this one and another one. You've got Hanush already in there. Um, the other parcels having been developed probably would be easy to be zoned. And, and then you could uh, you know, your, the idea of leaving the interior parcels, which is everything else, frankly, uh, in its current zoning uh, could be uh, realized. The other thing I would point out is when you look at, um, in your regulations, section 5.3, special requirements pertaining to the BR district, Says that only planned commercial developments, and that's underlined because it's it's defined in the definition, including regional shopping centers, underlined, containing more than 80,000 square feet of building floor area, occupying a parcel 10 acres or more in area, and under unified ownership or control. We all know what ownership means. I don't know that I know whether or not this parcel, given that its title is going to be transferred, what what the word control is supposed to mean in this context. So, um, and, and I guess that's the rub, are, are it, because if we're not under control, uh, unified control, then, and we can't be a planned commercial district or planned commercial development or regional shopping center, then what can our 1.4 acres be? Um, and again, I, you know, I, I don't know what that word control means in this context. So that's one thing that concerns me. But I understand the concerns about the interior. I, I understand them very well. Um, I, I'm just not sure that um, that changing the B, this to BG is going to uh, implicate your, your desire to have this sort of uh, unified development in the, in the square proper. But, you know, those are, again, just my thoughts. 
is the is the town the owner of uh, one dash twenty nineteen or? Boy, was the town the owner of one of one of those parcels? Did did I did we discuss this at one time? Probably not. Um, there is one parcel out there that I believe um, was owned by the state. Oh, okay. That's along the uh, highway. Yeah, or near know. the highway. Yeah. I had thought. But, but again, my point was is that we're really, if we're talking about possibly creating a little uh, more flexibility with respect to Elm Street. Um, you know, lot one and lot four are the only real lots that we're, we're talking about at this point. Um, I, I understand that approach, but I, I don't buy it. We just tore down Plaza Azteca and they're putting up another building there. So commercial, it's nothing for them to go in and tear down a building and build something. You, Carl, how many times you've been to planning and zoning and done that? No comment. Okay. What would it be beneficial for the commission if we table this and we could do a quick analysis as to what the differences would be in the uses? Because I'm looking at the table and there's not that many things that are not in both zones. Car washes just happens to be one of them, but there's really not that many things. Um, animal well, hospital, kennels and veterinary offices. Would that be the worst thing to have along that road? Probably they wouldn't do it anyway, but um, so maybe we could do something like that and just do a quick analysis, look at all the parcels that, that would be feasible to change to this or not change to it. And would that be helpful or? Well, th that's why I wasn't in favor of closing the public hearing, because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot more we can do without it possibly failing tonight. Yeah. Um, I, I, I understand their timeline, but Right now, I don't see it looking too good, and I'd rather table it, get more clarification okay. um, for all the commissioners. I don't know how the commission feels about that. Yeah, I, I mean, this way, I mean, we may not be have a workshop or anything, but maybe we could do a little bit more analysis for you to help you uh, kind of see the bigger picture. Is Don speaking tonight? So he actually had um, a public hearing that got rescheduled, got continued and rescheduled to tonight. Tonight, so he asked if he could come to the next meeting. Okay. So, um, but I could, I could maybe talk to him about it. Okay. So, but you know, I, I rather than close the public hearing, I, you know, if, if maybe you know additional information or just you know big picture items might help the commission decide one way or the other. Right, because I, I think Commissioner Alimo's comments, you know, about Trader Joe's or something like that, Christmas tree shops, that's all of our impressions there. Yeah. Not a Meineke or a Monroe or a car wash or a car dealership. It just, that's not the intent of that whole area. Yeah, but I don't um, think you're gonna find anything like that going on to a acre lot. But it wouldn't be, it, it's part of the mall. So it's not an, a, a two acre lot. Cause I oh, still see, and that's where we, maybe we get legal opinion from the town attorney, Lori, about, cause he was there through this. And, you know, my interpretation is, it, you know, uh, PCD, you know? So yeah, if it is- I kind of look at it more like a condo. I mean, even though they own the land underneath, it's still, all well, that's the difference between a condo and a PCD is, or a, a PUD yeah. is owning the land or not owning the land. A condo, you don't own the land. A plan unit development or commercial development, you own the land. Yeah. Um, so I understand what you're saying, Mr. Chairman, but this particular lot is being marketed as a 1.4 acre parcel with no rights to, uh, other than to use the interior road system, rights to do anything in connection with you know, because it's sort of, it's on an, it, this parcel actually is in an island. You look at it, right? Surrounded by, by all four sides, by nothing that would allow it to be connected in a development, uh, you know, way with anything else that's there. But, but there's still, you're still under control of the mall. The yeah. mall could say, even if we gave you the zone change, 
and, and I don't know if they have or haven't, they could say no to what you want to put there. I'm sure you've already discussed that with them, but we, yes, we have. Right. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. So, right. um, you know, I think right now they're just about, you know, selling off as much as they can sell off as fast as they can. And I don't know that that's the best for the community and, um, Commissioner Petronella, I, I think he kind of feels the same way. And I, I think we need to talk about it some more. So I, I, I have don't no objection to that. I mean, I, I'd rather, you know, have another shot at convincing you that this is a good thing than, than you turning me down tonight. So, well, and that's why yeah. I didn't want to close the public yeah. hearing because once mm -hmm. we close it, it's over. So, right. mm -hmm. you know, we're going to go to a vote. And right now we're still open. And because I know there's a lot of research, you brought in a lot of great ideas and I want to do some homework on it. I'd like to get the town attorney's opinion also. Uh, not that your opinion is not correct, Carl, but you know. <laughs> um, so if the commission wants, I'll entertain a motion to table. Commissioner Alimo, your hands up. Yeah. Um, so we are going to be looking at these as individual lots and their individual sizes going forward, correct? Not if it's a plan, a PCD, then the size of the lot is irrelevant because it's tied to the mall. And that's, that's how I think a lot of us interpreted the subdivision of the mall is they still have control of what happens on that land, even though they don't own it. Because, you know, Carl had brought up a moment ago about that other lot, which is just to the West, uh, just to the East of the entrance, that corner there, you know, that's, a quarter of the size of this one, you know, not looking right now. At, it, at the map. it would be irrelevant. Right. It, would, it so. wouldn't matter if this is a PCD. The size of that lot is irrelevant because it's part of a larger parcel. It's under control of a larger parcel. That's how plan unit developments get cluster housing on it. The de developers can put in a hundred houses where there's only supposed to be ten right. because right. they own the roads, they own the infrastructure. You know, everything is on them and not the town. And that's why we, at least me, and I think a few other commissioners, or that's how we interpreted the subdivision of the mall. They've said from day one, Frank, they are still in full control of what I happens. Agree. Yep, I remember that. And that, yep. and that document, so we, wanna, the document we talked about tonight is the controlling document. Right. And I don't want to shut Carl down or the applicant down because I don't know where I'm at right now. But with the information I have at this point, if I was forced to a vote, I would probably vote against it because I don't have enough information. I want to be educated before I make a decision on this. And there's a lot of information thrown at us tonight. So um, I want to open it to the public one more time to see if anybody out there has anything they'd like to add. And then I would like an to entertain a motion to table this. And, you know, Lori's going to do her due diligence. We do ours and we'll go forward from there. And even Carl would rather table it than be rejected. Oh, I'm fine with that. Okay. Like, you know, it, it came out that we wanted to not hold this applicant up and let's move forward. That's what our advice was earlier tonight. So I'm good with that. If the applicant is good with that, I'm fine with it. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak in favor or against public hearing 29930 Elm Street zone change? If so, state your name and address for the record, please. Going for the second time, just speak up. And the third time. Okay, seeing none. So there's no information out there other than what we've discussed. So I would like to entertain a motion to table if the commission's good with that. So I'll move. No, I can't motion. make a motion. You've got to make it. I make a motion. We table this public hearing to our next regular meeting. Second. Or, Second. A, special need, or a special needing, meeting if needed. Commissioner Limo motion. Commissioner Grillo second. Roll call, please. You're muted, Ginny. Okay. Sorry, Ken no Nelson. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley, four. Frank Alimo. Four. Vinny Grillo. Four. John Petronella. Four. All in favor, none against. 
Uh, Carl, I think you understand where we're coming from yep. and we'll do our best to try to resolve this either at the next meeting or maybe like Commissioner Alimo said, a special meeting if so, we can fit it in our agendas. So it's not necessarily March 11th. It may be at a different time. Or... As of right now, it's March 11th. March 11th. Okay. Yeah, but... Very good. Okay. All right. Thank you. For Thank your time, you. Mom. Thank you, Carl. Yep. Thank you, Carl. Good night. Good night. Well, uh, you're going to see me on the next one. Okay. <laughs> good to see you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Frank. Take care. That's why he was so polite to us this evening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, uh, new public hearings. Okay. Old business. I don't see any. And then new business. Special permit 1848 and Moody Road. Jenny? Oh, do we need to read site it? plan review. Yep. Site plan review 1848, 128 Moody Road. Site plan review application for the construction of a 2,880 square foot office building. Jarmock Farms applicant, 128 Moody Road LLC owner. Map 93, lot 5, I1 zone. Okay. Um, we don't need roll call for this, right, Lori? No. No. Okay. Is there anyone for the Side applicant? Right. Is there anyone here for the applicant? If so, state your name and address for the record, please. Yes. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, attorney Carl Landolina, Fahey and Landolina in Windsor Locks, representing the applicant, uh, Jarmock Farms. Uh, I'm joined here by Owen Jarmock from the uh, Jarmock Farms uh, the, the family operation. Uh, and Jay Ussery, our, our engineer from J.R. Russo and Associates is, is here with me. And um, you're not gonna hear a lot from me uh, this evening. It's a, a site plan application and uh, the capable Jay Ussery is going to go through the details of the, uh, the proposed site plan. So with that, uh, I guess I would turn it over to Jay. Thanks, Carl. You're welcome. Thank you, Carl. Uh, Members of the commission, Mr. Chairman, Jay Ursri, J.R. Russo here representing the applicant. And let me make an attempt here to share the screen with you and we'll see if we can get our plan up. Just bear with me here for one minute. Okay, can we all see this? I can. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That's can a good you, start. Can you enlarge that a little? Can you enlarge that a little, Jay? I, I can. Just how is that? Can we all read that? Maybe it's mine. I'm only getting half picture. Yep. All right. I'm getting the whole let thing. Me, well, let me back it out then a little. Is that better? Is that better, Ken? Um, no, I'm still, I, I have the plans here, so I'll just use the paper plans. Yeah, I have them too to my side. It's always better. You, you yeah. blow these up and down. You can't read it all the time. I'll be very happy when we can get back to a meeting all together in a room, believe me. Yes. <laughs> all right. This, this Zoom stuff is for the birds, but we'll do the best we can. So as Carl had said, this is an application for Jarmac Farms. It's 128 Moody Road. Uh, this is a 2,880 square foot office building uh, that'll support the farm. Their office staff will be in here. It's, uh, there's no agricultural equipment or anything of that nature. This is strictly an office building to support the farm operation. So it's a pole barn type construction. Uh, I'm gonna show you some architectural plans here in a few minutes. And, and we're gonna enter here off of Moody Road. There's an existing driveway here. Uh, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna come over, head to the west. And the building is located right here. We have eight parking spaces in the front. Uh, we're required three. We've got eight and one handicap space. And the property is served by sanitary sewer, city water. Actually, the utilities are already on the property. We're gonna have a water connection here. 
we've got a, a small uh, uh, grinder pump. We're going to be pumping our sewerage up to an existing uh, force main that goes out to the intersection of Park and, and Moody where the sanitary manhole is. So they have been operating uh, the last few years since they bought this parcel in this little tiny building right here where my cursor is, which is, I was in it once and I can honestly tell you that it's quite small. Um, they've got a fairly large farming operation and I know most of you commissioners are pretty familiar with it, but I think they're farming a little over 500 acres or somewhere thereabouts and Owen can chime in if I'm wrong, but I think it's somewhere in that area and they have office staff and and they can't quite fit everything they need to in here. So this is going to be a, a a great improvement for them in terms of the office people that they that they have that are that are working for them on a on a regular basis. So <clears throat> we had an ART with the staff. There were a few questions that came up and if you read through your packet and took a look at uh, Lori's memo or maybe it was Jen's memo, I guess pretty much describes what we're doing here. Um, there really weren't not any real questions. There was a couple things from the building department with regard of designating the handicap space, which this will be uh, put on the ground as well as a sign. This area is already all paved with bituminous millings. Um, there were a couple of questions from John Cabibbo, and I think there may have been some confusion initially in terms of the uh, the narrative that came in with this that talked about the Jarmok farming operation and, and how many acres they had and so on and so forth and may have made it sound like this was a, an actual ag building, which it's not. Uh, the public will be here. Uh, the workers will be here. There will be vendors that come in and out of here, you know, maybe a seed salesman or, or somebody that's looking to purchase uh, produce from them would come here. But not a lot of activity other than just the actual employees themselves. So <clears throat> I think the memo describes everything very well. We are providing some landscaping, which is required in the regulations. There's a 10 foot landscape buffer right up against the front of the building. Um, those are shrubs. There's a couple of trees that are added, one on either end here. Those are dogwoods which again are required in your regulation in terms of, of landscape uh, uh, around the parking area. Uh, and we've got a parking data block down here and a zoning data block uh, that describes all of that, but we're in excess of everything that's required in terms of parking spaces and the landscaping itself. The parcel here is a fairly large parcel. It's an I zone, it's an agricultural use. It's just under 40 acres. One of the other things that you'll see in your packet as part of the application was an application for or a request for a waiver of a full property boundary survey of the entire 40 acres. We're only working in a relatively small area here right south of, of Moody Road and uh, uh, didn't seem, that, seem necessary to do a full boundary survey and existing condition survey of this whole 40 acre parcel, which is you know, bounded north by Moody to the east, we've got park. To the west, immediately, there's a single family home that, that fronts on Moody Road. And then just beyond that and behind it is Fermi High School. Uh, that's the abutter to the west of this for the most part. There's a farm, farm pond located here and a pretty good wood line. I, I think in the, in the summer, you can't see Fermi from here. Uh, even now, probably in the wintertime, it's pretty difficult. It's probably five, 600 feet away, if I had to guess. It's fairly good distance from where we are here. So that's kind of a general overview of where the building's going. Like I said, existing paved entry here, come in, buildings located here, parking in the front. Now, let me see if I can find some building details, which, and I've got something here. Hold on a minute, bear with me. Let me scroll around here. Okay. Now here we've got some elevations and here's the front. Now the front's facing east. The gable end of this building is gonna face Moody Road, but this is the front where the parking spaces would be located. Uh, it's a double entry door, which kind of bumps out off the building. Uh, 
there's a couple of cupolas on the roof. This is a standing seam metal roof. And I believe, Owen, if you're listening, tell me if I'm wrong, this is a metal skin on the building as well, as this is kind of built like an ag building. It's a pole barn, uh, but it'll be finished as office space on the interior. The side that faces Moody is a gable end and bear with me here for a minute, which would be the right elevation. So this is what you're gonna see from Moody Road itself. This is the gable end of the building. There's windows, there's a couple of exit doors. This is the bump out for the front entry, which would be located uh, adjacent to the parking spaces. And then there would be landscaping, that 10 foot landscape area would be either side of this along the front of the building. And you can see the cupola here that's that's closest uh, to that end of the building on Moody Road. So that gives you kind of a feel for what this is gonna look like. It's got a real agricultural look to it. There's a bump out on the back as well, looking to the west uh, out towards the pond. And then the rear elevation really is just pretty much a mirror image uh, of the front. It's not, not a whole lot different, although obviously this will be all lawn, lawn area and grass in the back. There's no paving or anything in the back of the building. So that gives you kind of an idea of what it looks like. Let me go back. Let me go back to the site plan here. So here's where we are. So again, front elevation here, which I just showed you the gable end facing Moody Road mirror image of the front here to the back and then on the gable end here facing to the south. So pretty straightforward, um, not all that large, like I said, 2,900 or 2,880 square feet. It's not a real big building. And, and basically office staff uh, for the farm operation that would be located here. So that, that's a basic overview of what we have. Um, any of you commissioners have any questions? Hopefully I can answer them. If I can't, I'm sure maybe uh, Owen can. He's a little more familiar with the building construction than I am. But in terms of the site plan, I think I could probably answer any questions that you might have. Owen, can you please state your name and address for the record, please? Owen Jarmok, 33 School Street, Enfield, Connecticut. Okay, thank you. He just keeps referring to you so everybody knows who he's talking to. Thank you. Did you want to add anything, Owen? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. It's um, just to, you know, so we're not in our quote unquote shed over there. Um, a little bit nicer, more space. Okay, Commissioner Petronella. John? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this uh, entire parking lot is comprised of uh, pavement millings. And uh, I'm a little bit surprised at that. Uh, I, I didn't, I thought that we had to have a hard surface there. Now, and, and I, I'm not sure how you're gonna paint stencils for the handicap uh, in, in parking on those millings and, and have it hold. I'm also concerned about the fact that if you got a handicap spot there, you know, those millings can get soft and, and, and dig in. And I just don't see it a, a, as a safe uh, a pathway to get in and out of the building. And, and once again, if, if we allow this is, are, are we setting up, are, are we going to tee it up for other applications to, 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 to come in with and propose millings on their parking areas, uh, various other applications. So I, I, I do have a concern with that for a lot of different reasons, actually. So um, I saw John Kabibbo's comment on that. And, and basically, uh, he, he just mentioned handicap stencils or the, uh, uh, to be marked out on millings for the parking lot. Uh, typically stencils are painted on pavement and the response to that is it says will be properly addressed. Uh, not, not even sure what that means. Um, so uh, that's, that's my biggest concern here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, John. 
Anybody Again, else? Jay Ursri here representing right. the applicant. Uh, that, that's a good question, John. We did talk about that at the ART and it was something that, that John had brought up, although John wasn't present. And, and we talked about that with the jar mocks. And I think truthfully, and if, and if you wanted to make it a condition of an approval, certainly we would be willing to do this. I think that area needs to be paved where the handicap space is and where the front entryway to the to the actual building is, the cross-hatched area that would be part of the handicapped space, which would allow us to uh, paint the actual handicap marking on the pavement itself, as well as the sign that we're gonna put in front of it and, and keep that area paved, the space and the actual entryway to the door. So, and we did discuss that a little bit at the ART and, and I agree with you, I'm not sure that uh, the millings would hold the actual stencil or the painting. Uh, and, and truthfully, uh, I've seen millings put down pretty good. If they're put down in the hot weather and rolled, they look pretty darn good. These, uh, you know, could use a little work. And I think, you know, the thinking of the applicant here is it's, even though we're calling it an office building, which it is, it's more of an agricultural operation. And, and there's going to be farm equipment coming in and out of here, tractors and and that type of thing and some heavier equipment and uh, paving the whole thing maybe doesn't make a lot of sense, but I think your point is well taken in that the area up here where the handicap space is and the front entryway needs to be new bituminous paving so that we're we're safe and, and we're comfortable with a, a handicapped person parking there and being able to get in and out of the building. Yeah, I'm I'm certainly sympathetic to, to, to the use and 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 to the and to the farm and so forth. It, it's it's uh, uh, you know the, the parking area uh, that in front of the building. If, if that were paved uh, uh, to to cover the car parking, and then if the rest of it were milling, based upon the use uh, uh, and agricultural, I wouldn't have an, I wouldn't have an issue with the rest of it being uh, uh, millings, but. Uh, you know, again, for safety reasons and everything else, uh, I, I think that the, that the parking areas sh should be paved. And, uh, um, you know, I just don't want to see other applications try to uh, uh, mimic this down the road, if, if you will, uh, on, on, on certain applications. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, John. Um, where is the driveway for this building? Am I not seeing it on the plan? Yep. Uh, again, Jay Ursri uh, representing the applicant. Uh, Ken, can you see my cursor here? Yeah, I see that to the existing okay. building. No, no. Well, there's an existing building here. Yeah. Which is somewhat of an L-shaped affair. And then there's a bituminous driveway that comes in right here. And I think what we're showing here is this is actually bituminous pavement. <laughs> that comes in up to the corner of this building. So it's all paved and then there's a driveway that goes to the east. And then the rest of this from this point west is Millings, but the entryway is right here. And I okay, believe so there's also a gate here because there's a fence along the entire front of this property. So it is gated. Yeah. So the entryway was here. You would come in head westerly at this point over to the office space. So you're not doing any new curb cuts? No, existing curb cut. Okay, and you're okay with Commissioner Petronella's condition of approval is that the front of the building is to be paved? I, I think it's a good point and it's a point well taken and I understand the commission's concern. Um, we wouldn't want somebody coming in on Elm Street on a new parcel thinking that they could build a new building on, on uh, bituminous milling. So I understand, I think it's a point well taken and I don't think the applicant has any problem with paving the, the, the parking spaces in the front of the building. Okay, thank you. Commissioners? Anybody? Okay. How does the commission want to proceed? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I, just to just add a note, if you're going to make that a condition of approval, I would just like to add um, that they add the pavement detail on the plans as well, please. Okay. Jay, can I get you to take your screen down? Thank you. I just can't see the commissioners when it's up. 
how do you guys want to move forward or do you? We'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve uh, SPR uh, 2988-128 uh, Moody Road uh, site plan review for construction of a 2880 square foot building and associated parking for Jarmock Farms. Um, map 93, lot 05, industrial one zone, according to the below reference plans with the following conditions of approval, which are mentioned uh, uh, 25 conditions plus the condition of that we add the uh, pavement uh, at the parking um, parking stalls with a pavement detail. Second. And it's seconded by Commissioner DeGray. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call please. Jenny, you're muted. Jenny, unmute. Uh huh. Ken Nelson. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. Vinny Grillo. Four. John Petronella. Four. All in favor, none against. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you, Mr. Gunner. Okay, um, other business, discussion with the consultant. He is unavailable this evening. Yeah, he really uh, sends his apologies. He ended up having a public hearing unexpectedly um, forwarded or, or, or uh, continued to this evening. And he wasn't sure if it was gonna end before we were on here. And then he also had some other issues that came up, some court issues that he's got to attend to for tomorrow. And he was kind of freaking out. And I was like, you know, we've got a, a light agenda for the next one. Just let's just do that. So. That's fine. If if just if you could reach out to him, Lori, about the other mm -hmm. application. Absolutely. And uh, maybe he can give us something in writing. Right. His take. Yeah. Um, so um just to remind everybody that uh, we'll, he will be here at the next meeting and then the steering committee starts on March 17th for the POCV. <clears throat> so. Okay. Um, uh, correspondence. You, you should have received something from Nicole Maruka today. Um, there's another of uh, actually a free webinar from the Yukon Clear on land use commissions and procedures and policies and stuff like that. So um, it, it's, it's one that you could sign up on your own. It's free. So just look for that email in case you're wondering about it. I can't remember what the date was though, but you should just look for something from Nicole Maruka. Okay. Yeah, I saw it today. It's free. Okay. Um, we also received for any of you who um, signed up for the uh, Connecticut uh, Bar Association, the Lynn U Seminar, um, we received the books in the office and we will be sending them out uh, with the police auxiliary uh, tomorrow. How big are the books? like that big. <laughs> right, I mean, can you send them out in next week's packet instead of making a special trip? We, we could. I mean, I'm just trying to save you some work. Um, that's all. Yeah, we, we, we could do that. Um, yeah. If it's easier for you guys, that's all. Yeah. You know, we've yeah. gone this far without them. So, okay. Commissioner's yeah. correspondence. Uh, one quick thing, Ken. Is I think the meeting it the um isn't the seminar the sixth if I'm not mistaken so if we wait to to have the book sent out that um, seminar will already have been passed 
Yes. Good point. If we send them out next Friday, you'll get them the day before. My one worry is that sometimes, um, I know the police auxiliary will just deliver things also on Saturday, yeah. like Saturday morning sometimes if they're busy. So yeah, that, and it's it's on the sixth, so that would be I, the only whatever. It, it was just yeah. a suggestion to try That's to save okay. them. I yeah. I hear what you're saying, but. That was usually you wouldn't get the booklet until you arrived at the at the seminar anyways. anyways. So, yeah, um, but we'll we'll see how busy they are tomorrow. How's that? All right. All right. Wait out. Director of Development Services report. Um. Wow. Budget. Just been working on budget. 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 It's a hard one this year. What do you um, mean? Uh, they want zero percent increase, so we have to find a lot of ways to cut, which is, you know, that's fine. It just, it's, it's just work. <laughs> um, you tell them you control the growth of this community. If they don't give you what you want, I'm I kidding. don't control it. You do. I'm kidding, Mike. That was a joke. Okay. I know. <laughs> So um, we are going to be starting the um, traffic study around Enfield Square Mall, which I kind of alluded to earlier. So that was the the it was supposed to be a corridor study, but it's um, you know going into Hazardville from the mall area. But um, due to the funding available and the amount of work that it was going to take, it it kind of got scaled down. But now it's going to really focus on the mall area. And we will get some uh, market studies as to market feasibility studies for the mall area with that as well. And then in addition, um, Krog is also going to, um, they're, they're trying to finalize some funding to do some market analysis studies in the TOD area. So hopefully we'll be able to do that uh, maybe with the Strand and Lamagna, or maybe some other sites that we might focus on in the in Thompsonville. So those are two things that are coming up as well. Good. There's something else to work on. Good. We did also say goodbye to our to our other assistant planners, oh, Savannah and Nicole. So yeah. Oh yeah. Looking to hire another assistant planner. She's leaving already. She's, She's left. Already gone. Yeah. How long did she last? About seven months, seven, eight months. Wow. So uh, she um, took a, a position with the city of Hartford. So she really wanted to be in a city. So it's a great loss to our staff, but um, uh, the application closes tomorrow for a new person. She we was full time. She was yeah. full time, right? Yeah. 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 So she was very good, and hopefully, we'll find another really good person. And you got to go ahead to replace her. Yeah, the, it was. It's already been uh, uh, noticed out in the public, so okay. it closes tomorrow. So far, I apparently there's like seven applications that I know of. I have no idea whether any of them have any any qualifications right. or not. Right. Okay. Good. So yeah, thanks, Jen, for reminding me. I, I've just been trying to put that out of my mind. <laughs> Did she give us a notice? Yeah, two weeks. Yeah. Oh. So right. her her last day was this last Monday. Okay. So yeah. All righty. Can't Good. seem to sit still around here. Administrative approval report. Uh, we do have a few things floating out there um, that are coming in. I just don't think anything's been filed yet. So you will be getting a call soon, Ken. <laughs> All righty. Good. Applications to be received? Uh, we do have, um, we still have that Chicago SAMS um, special permit application pending. I have been in communication with the owner of Chicago SAMS and uh, it looks like he gave us all the information this week that we needed to move forward. So hopefully they'll be on the next agenda. Um, we have something like three text amendments pending. They're all at Krog for comment right now. 
Um, and then most likely we'll be getting another special permit application for an expansion of a non-conforming structure. It's another house that just wants an addition and they're sitting in the front setback technically. So it'll be probably most likely on the next agenda as well. Um, other than that, I think that's all we have in the office so far for planning and zoning. Okay. Um, what street is that house on for the setback, Jen? Overhill Drive. And it's the same thing, the whole neighborhood's over the setback because of a... Yep. So can we handle that administratively as long as they're not going any farther over? Unfortunately, with the commission? a Go special ahead. permit is required. Oh, okay. So. All right, and uh, that is one of our major topics for updating the regulations, right? Because this is costing the homeowner money yeah, I um, when we first started the zoning regulation update, um, I gave Don my zoning regulations that had like every markup from the last five years of things that like either don't make sense or make things really difficult um, for business owners or homeowners. And uh, that was a big one that I flagged um, to find a way to let people expand their homes if they're sitting in the front setback and the whole neighborhoods that way. So. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Opportunity and unresolved issues, combining planning and zoning and wetlands. Uh, nothing has happened with that that I'm aware of. Lori, nothing. I, I thought you said that you were supposed I did. to. Nothing happened. I haven't. I haven't gotten to it yet. So uh, I don't okay, think. Okay. So it, you're not. I, you're not presenting to town council next month. I. We haven't even discussed it. I haven't talked to the oh, mayor. Oh. Okay. Since, so I yep. know they're busy and. Um, so, yeah, they are. Yeah. And now they're going into budget. So, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um, motion to adjourn. I make a motion. We adjourn. Janini, okay. unmute yourself. Motions made and seconded by Commissioner Second. Petronella. All in favor, oh, say okay. aye. 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 Thank Did you, everyone. No matter how long. No matter how loud you yell, if you're muted, we can't hear you. <laughs> so you go, nah! Good night, all. Thank you very good much. Night, Have a good night, guys. Bye-bye. Ending bye. the meeting.